back by popular demand. You guys have screamed and asked the king to do a part two of Bongenkosi Kanyele. Well, that is exactly what I'm going to do in this video. Thank you so much for tuning in on King Said So. Welcome to King Said So. Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite your Pan-Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Black Heart, the hustle continua. 100% good quality t-shirts. Made to inspire you. Goals and dreams. T-shirts are now available at an affordable price. Place your order now. 068-473-6908. Instagram at black7576. Facebook page Black Heart. Peace in Pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome back to King Said So. I'm your host, King053, Mr. Easy, Imali, and we're back in edit again with another one. And this time around, we're doing a part two of Bogenkosi Kanyele. Part one was on fire. You guys enjoyed the interview, and we are doing part two. And of course, if you want part three, make sure you go on the comment section and ask for part three, because of course, the interview was too long. I cannot do one thing. Otherwise, you know, the video will be just too long and I don't want to speak more than Ubongin Kosi Kanyele and I will make sure that he speaks more than me. But the young man had an excellent interview with uh, DJ O Khrutmanu, DJ Smu, and uh, I think most of the truth that he spoke was uncomfortable and was challenging other people's um comfort zone and in this video i'm going to cover a little bit more of what he said in those interviews one thing that he said he spoke about a german family that owned um, many shares in the reserve bank many people did not know about this german family and he explained that why he wants to kick out this german family and then why it is um, important for us to be patriotic about things that belong to South Africa. Listen to this. German national Michael Dewar owns um, between 0.5% to not 57.5% of the South African Reserve Bank. The ruling Afri South, um, African National Congress... Nah, uh, the ruling African National Congress is in favor of nationalizing the bank, as is the opposition, the Economic Freedom Fight Fighters Party. But the Democratic Alliance, the largest, op the largest opposition party, will have none of this and have taken a hardline position calling it a hostile takeover. Th sorry, it's a, it's a long article. Yeah. But um, the interesting thing is that what you're saying... Look, looks like looks like But in March 2014, the bank asked Mr. Michael Dewar to dispose of his family shares, exceeding over 10,000 shares by March 2015, mm. or he could submit evidence to prove he was not related to any other shareholders. At this stage, the bank believed that in addition to his own shares, Dewar was an associate of eight other shareholders: his parents, two brothers, wife, two daughters, and his son. The bank claimed that Michael Dewey and his family held at least 90,000 shares mm. or 4.5% of the bank's 2 million shares in, in 2014. Mm. This is quite an interesting article. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link of this article in the description, guys. I just Googled it. I didn't even know about Mr. Michael Dewey. It's the first so time I hear about him. Okay, you click were very clear. We don't want this man. We don't want this man. So and, and foreign entities that, that tend to um, undermine or take advantage of our sovereignty, right? Yes, yes. You, you, you know, Sbu, you know, Sbu. It's better if we're discussing you that Mofaya owns South African has shares in the South African Reserve Bank. It's a conversation that we are willing to have a discussion on. It's a question of patriotism. It's a question of you being an African. It would have been better if we were discussing some Nigerian billionaire having shares in the South African Reserve Bank. Not a German national. Not a German national. We don't know what happened with these elders who are leading our country. They have no sense of patriotism. We must discuss you. 
we must discuss Umin and Tliban having the shares in the South African Reserve Bank. Not a German national, not an American national, not a France national. Africa for Africans. From the economy, from the land, and in all facets of life. So we are clear, we don't want anything that smells white foreign families in terms of our economy. That man who must seize his asset, freeze them, and we send him back home. I think that's the most lenient thing. He won't rot in jail, but all his ill-gotten wealth must come back to South Africans. Then we can see how do we redistribute that, those resources. But it must not be that after 30 years of democracy, we still rely on the colonialism in terms of the economy of the foreign countries. Number one, for the mere fact that we as a country does not own our reserve bank, meaning that we don't own our rights of printing our money, our currency, is already an error for a black family. It's already an error. Whereas the reserve bank takes out about 2,000 shares, and then in those shares, they, you find the Rupert, the Oppenheimers, the Akar, Akamarans, and you find the German family, people from overseas, owning the shares of printing our currency. Something is wrong with us Africans. And you find Africans having absolutely no problem whatsoever with this. Africans are not concerned. Are not concerned. Ubongin Kosi is saying, listen, this is pure rubbish. A, a white family from Germany cannot own shares in our reserve bank. But he should have started with uh, the reserve bank cannot be owned by other people. It must be owned by the state. The state must print its own money. Just like other countries do. Germany's money is not printed by other people. It's printed by the government of Germany. We cannot be beaten by Indonesia in Mozambique. Mozambique is printing its own money. The Reserve Bank belongs to Mozambique. What is this? Come on, ladies and gentlemen. So, ooh, 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 Mr. Kanyili says, listen, it's better if we were debating this thing and we we're talking about DJ Spoo who owns shares in the Reserve Bank. And, or, or a Nigerian uh, businessmen owning shares in the people. It's better that it's our own people. That is being patriotic. That is why I like this young man. I like young men that push the envelope, man. You cannot be always liked by everyone. You must speak the truth the way the, stu the truth must be spoken. So, for me, he's hitting, he's hitting, um, he's hitting the right note, man. He's hitting the nerve, man. He's eating the... Listen to what he says about job opportunities, EPWP, and people getting into internships. ...of the foreign countries. We say EPWP in South Africa. They must get permanent jobs. We say under the MK government as the MK you click. We are sick and tired of this thing of saying that people from 18 to 35 are the ones that qualify for internship. We as black people, sometimes you start to go to school at the age of 40. And you can still qualify for internships at the end because you understand for me, I start becoming a security, I save. From there, I'm promoted. I'm now a manager of securities. Then I register at the age of 36 or 40 years for my diploma. But I no longer qualify for internships because I'm beyond 36. We must remove that cap. Anyone who wants an internship must be able to qualify for a a internship. The problem with with um, us Africans is that we have put in our timelines for writing of people. I don't know who came up with this thing of 18 to 35. The opportunities are open for those people. People live longer and other people, uh, let me say, bloom later. You understand? Like, like he said, you find other people because of their family situation. They leave school, literally drop out of school to go and find a security job or to start a, 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 a small business to support their family and try to allow their siblings to go to school instead of them. Especially us as the older, um, the firstborn children. We sacrifice so that our siblings can have a better life. So this thing of uh, 18 to 35, you find when we are 35 years old, our youngest sister just got out of school. So we are still working 
to pay tuition, to try to give them transportation money, Imanium Kero, so that I'm a blessing among them, told them to understand Kaya, and try to nigger something, you know, so that she, uh, the world does not consume her. So when I'm 40, now she's, she's got a job. Now I can look after myself. And I still have a vision to say, I want to be a lawyer. I want to, I still want to study. And you find that the government has locked me out in terms of internships. They don't want me. Even employment, sometimes they, they stipulate that you, you must be under age of 40. You must be under age of 35. Because they see you as expired goods. That thing is killing us as Africans. If we are honest, and, and transparent about this truth that Ubongi Kosikanyele is, is saying. It is killing our African people. It's making, especially men, you find them being, they call them mama deadbeat. They, they can't support their children. They can't do anything. And men are the only creatures in the world that is loved under condition that they can provide something. So a man needs a job. A man needs a flippant job so that he can be respected in the community, respected in his family, respected everywhere he needs a job. So this thing of 18 to 35 is not working. Give people a, a, an opportunity to push, uh, to push wherever. If this 52-year-old still wants an internship of 3,500, 4,500, uh, 6,000 rand, and uh, he studied one, two, three things, Whatever he studied and he still wants to get into a teacher, give him that opportunity. For him, it is a win. For you, it must be embarrassing that this 42-year-old uh, is only doing his driver's license now. His, own, his life is working the way it's working out. Give the man a chance to, to work out his life. I agree with him. But he also spoke about land. Let's listen to what he said about the land. Oh, I'm eternally out today. To everyone, so it pains me. It pains me every time I travel to Alexandra. Yesterday, we, a day before yesterday, we're in Alexandra. Have you seen how black people stay in Alexandra, DJ Sbu? I was talking to my Secretary General in the UK and saying, How can we better? What is the solution of Alexandra? I was saying, let, let's say we become government. How do we finish those, the, those informal settlements in Alexander? The only solution we got is that you cannot finish those, those informal settlements without actually taking other a, 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 a residents and putting them in an, another land. You build them houses because the area is small, but it's overcrowded. Because our people do not have land. The land is in the private hands. And the majority of people that have land in their hands is white people, is churches. People are scared of saying these things. Your, your Anglican, the Church of England, Anglican has land. The Romans have land. We need that land which is owned by churches. Because most of these churches benefited from the land through colonialism. They must bring back the land. A private owners, they must bring back the land. Those who are owning hectares and hectares of land, they must bring it back. Government must, must say, do we compensate them? The discussion should be said, do we compensate them or we don't? But the land must be given back. Then we allocate our people. You cannot have a situation of Alexandra living forever while we have a black government. What's wrong with us is boom. In South Africa, we are reduced into becoming domestic workers. In South Africa, we are reduced in, into becoming security guards. In South Africa, we are reduced into, into selling fried chips. In South Africa, we are reduced into selling a market keep. In South Africa, we are reduced into becoming beggars. It's black people, it's not white people. Yet this land belongs to our forefathers. I'm telling you openly, without any fear of doubt, South Africa belongs to the black native people. White people came through the sea in 1652, where the problems of, white, of black people began. We don't wish them away, but we are saying in the land of our forefathers, in the land of Skukuni, in the land of Shagazul, in the land of Hoshimambur, we cannot live as beggars. Because when you go to England, you cannot find a, a white person working for a black person as a domestic. Yeah, I think 
also I played never mind even Abu Alex Mafetu. You you look at even in Cape Town. I played a video of how Cape Town looks because Cape Town is like a hey, beautiful and uh, the best city in Africa and everything. When you look at the people, they are they are living almost on the road because there is no space where black people are squeezed. And you ask yourself, what must black people do? Where must they run to? Who must they cry to? You know, you ask the question, are we the children of a lesser God? Does our God not hear our cry? No, Africans. Our God heard our cry and gave us the power. It is us who must stand up. It is us who must stand up and do something. We are not doing anything. We are not holding our black government into accountable, uh, accountable for doing what they are doing to us. Look at the conditions our children, our, our, our children, our, our grandmothers, our ancestors are living in. Look, just, like, just take a look at uh, Tembisa. Look at, look at Soweto. Look at uh, Alexandra. Yeah? Look at this rubbish of, of uh, elders. Look at where our people are staying. Look at, look at all the townships in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape. Every, look at where our people go. go Google a township uh, called Calfinia in Northern Cape. Just take a look at uh, Faisalberg, where the people are staying. It's, it's, it's crazy. And I, I want my political friends, when they say the land must be distributed equally, they must add the sentence to black people. Equally between black people. The, the white people must not think they will get equal to what black people will get. It is not possible, even numeric, numerically so, it is wrong. Black people must get more, white people must get less. Because black people are more than black than white people. Full stop. Not equally distributed towards everyone. Towards everyone who's African, the land must be distributed equally. And these ones will get what is left. That is what I will say about land. You guys know my position there. Okay. He also spoke about Sia Police. I did not want to punch too much about coconut, about brown outside, uh, uh, white inside. But he, he then further... Uh, made a point because DJ Spoo was trying to defend Usia Uta. Usia Wednesday is just a sport man. Then he made an example about uh, Muhammad Ali, Cassius K, Muhammad Ali, and he said, listen, Muhammad Ali used his position. Listen to what Ubonginko Zikanyele said. That is the difference. Usia Kolis, let's locate him. Is Usia Kolis a field negro or a house negro? No, why is your call is he catching strays, man? We are coming to him. I'm eating yes. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. I sense a proud guy. Proud of what? Proud of what? When he's taking our people and make them to uh, to be to, to be slaves of white people, to be slaves of white propaganda. How though? See how cool is he? There's rap playing. There. Greater together, greater together, greater together. You know when, after celebrating the victory of Rabi, when the buses was moving around in the suburbs in Cape Town, it was black people and white people. Immediately when the bus went to Kailisha, all white people remained behind. See how police went alone. It's there on Ikukul, Ikukul. Ilapu Kukul. Ikuklisha, it's there. Usia police went alone. In Deben, where I was, Immediately, bus say em la kamashu. Usia police ne usia police went alone. White people remained behind. But let's leave Rabi. We are stronger together, ne? Yeah. Kukula lapo ku 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 YouTube. Unge ne YouTube. When Bafana Bafana played, we all welcomed Rabi. Greater together, greater together. All of you with white people, you were hugging. When when Bafana Bafana played, and when Bafana Bafana was coming back home. Who, who welcomed Bafana Bafana? I never even saw a, 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 on a one white face welcoming Bafana Bafana. Because white people are just being white. You black people, you must begin to be black. If Bafana Bafana, you went and welcomed it alone. White people never went there. Because they can identify, they can identify with Rapi. But they don't identify with predominantly black spot. Because Usia Kolis is supposed to use his positionality where he's put as a rabbi 
as a rugby captain to highlight our plight as black people and tell people the truth. That's the only thing that will make us greater together. It's when the economy of South Africa is being leveled, when all of us, we can live like humans and black people, we can have things that makes us human. What makes us human is the access to water, is access to proper shelter, is access to proper food, is access to proper transportation. We cannot live in Alexandra where we live with big rats, where we live like animals, while white people live in Sentin, have everything that makes them human, while we have everything that makes us inhuman. He must say that on a national TV, that sports can never unite us. Only the economy can unite us. He's not an activist, he's not a politician, he's a sports, he's a sports star. He's a but sports we player. have learned from history, TJ Sbu, we are not speaking these things from nowhere. Malcolm, uh, we, Muhammad Ali, he is there as the greatest of them all. We salute him as black people because Malcolm, uh, the great Ali stood for black people while he was a boxer. He used his positionality of influence to speak on the plight and on the subjugation of black people because our unity, DJ Sbu, cannot be a cosmetic exercise. You cannot say stronger together while we go and watch a, ma a match of rugby. When you go home, you go to Sentin, and when I go home, I go to Soweto. You cannot say that. Speak the truth. It doesn't matter how bitter it is. Speak the truth. Don't now, ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali, is considered the best boxer ever because of the character he was. Not actually because of his boxing skill. Muhammad Ali got beaten many times and sometimes got beaten by boxers that were not even supposed to beat him. When you talk about the best skillful uh, boxer of all time, you're speaking about Abu, Abu uh, Floyd Mayweather, undefeated 50-0, took less punishment, made the most money in boxing. But when you put uh, uh, Mayweather and, and uh, Muhammad Ali and say who was the best, the people will then fall into Muhammad Ali's uh, legacy. Because Muhammad Ali represented our people. He used his position as a sports star to uh, raise awareness of how the black people were struggling at, at that time. And it was not easy to stand up and speak. Even when he won the, the, the gold, medal, gold medal at the Olympics, he still faced crit, uh, racism at the airport, at the shops, everywhere. Even when he was wearing the, the medal, the police, when they stopped him, they never cared that you are a, a black a superstar, you won a medal for America. They treated him like a Negro. So this thing is true. We have different type of Negroes, and Usiya is a different type of Negro. You will never hear Sia speaking about uh, uh, uniting uh, I mean, lifting black people. You'll always hear him speaking about uniting uh, blacks with white as if everything is all right in Africa. He, Sia is a person that says, forget about everything. You guys can see things are coming right now. Everything is okay. Let's uh, let's forget about the past. Let's unite as Africans. And no, unite Kanjani, Chinas, Pilagam Krumula, Watwa, Pilagam Nandi. That is the question that Ubongikos is asking. And another another guy uh, of which i like so much but, but uh, also who is a coconut is uh, Tembe Kwayo. Uvusi Tembe Kwayo is a is a nice businessman he's executing um what he's doing very well but he tends to look down to black people and ubongi nkosi kanyele has highlighted that listen to this is the face of, of, of these people, you know, you know who. Oh, let, let me enter to others because Nina Sbu, you, you are scared of these of these leaders. We must challenge them. <laughs> you know who says that? It's exactly like Siakolis. You'll see, you'll see, Pella Siakolis. Th these guys who, who don't speak on behalf of black people, who who, who blame black victims, uh, 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 they are all the same. Do you know who's that? Who's that guy? Vusi mm -mm. why? said him. Vusi is exactly a problem in the black nation. He's a problem. He's the one who says that, uh, black people must think outside of the box. He's the one who says that, uh, black people must work hard. Yet this country is built on the hard, uh, on, 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 on the hard work of black people, on their blood and sweaties. There's no race in this country that works hard than a black race. 
There's no race. We are cashiers. We are security guard. A security guard clocks in from six to six. Six to six, a security guard is there. Underpaid. When these people don't make it in life, you say they don't work hard. They must think outside of the block box. The, the, the solution in this country is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is the most rigged system that you can ever have. Without the interfer interference of government, a decisive government, on making sure that more black entrepreneurs, they succeed. You can, you can think outside of the box the, the, the way you like, you'll never make it. But you'll have Vusi Tembewa say, no, entrepreneurship must be the one. Say someone who studied at VETS. Blaming a security guard who was smart in class, but because nobody identified him, he couldn't make it. There are many smart children in my, in, in my hood, in Umlazi, in Guamashu, in Enkanja, who are not in the position I am. You know what made me to be where I am, Sbu? To have this plan for me and you? It was privilege. At home, at home, we grew up very poor. When my father left, came back from Houting, after working for white people for all his entire life, he came, with, he came back with a wheelchair because he was sick, gravely ill, with a 500 grand on his pocket. You know what made me succeed? It was because I have a smart privilege, an intellectual privilege. Amongst my peers in class, it's them number one, number two, number three. When you are like that, teachers, they love you. But there are many people who are smarter than me who will get number 10, number, number, number 15 in class. Much more talented than I, I am. But because academically I was always excelling, teachers were able to identify me. Hence, I was able to, to go to vets and compete with the children who are billionaires. The children who are extremely rich. I was able to go to, to vets. I was able to go to UKZN. I was able to go to a, a DUT and MUT because intellectually I was more privileged than other children. But had I not get number one and then number two, I would have been in the same plight. It's either I was going to be a taxi conductor, a taxi driver, or a security guard, as many of my peers. Or even once I would have been in jail because I would have robbed people for survival. Oh. Now, I, I've, I, I think I have made videos about Vusi in the past when my channel was still starting. I've made uh, videos about uh, Peñol, the black pen, when my channel was still starting. That this, this, These guys actually are not pushing uh, for black unity. They are dividing us according to class. You know, Ubongi Nkosi Kanyel is talking the truth. Sometimes some of us are not... Uh, it's not because we are we are wiser than uh, other people it's not because we are uh, more charming than other people it's not because uh, we are uh, clever or hard working than other people it's just because of the opportunity and the privilege that we got in terms of our schools that we find ourselves where we are i'm telling you even in my family i can i can tell the difference between me and my siblings because my mother made sure when I was born, I was the first born son of my mother. She said, this child will get the best education. I told you guys I went to 10 different schools and most of them were African schools and most of them were boarding schools. So I got a, a, a slighter, better education than my siblings. Uh, okay, most of them, or my siblings also went to private schools and all of that. But uh, I think I got a better hand with them. So I got a better opportunity when you come back and look at us later in our life, you, you, you will think that I work hard. It's not I work hard. I got a better, I got a better opportunity than my, my, my siblings and my other friends. That's why I find myself in the position. There's no clever black. There's, no, there's a black who got access to opportunities. So we as Africans must fight to create those opportunities for all African children, you know. So... Those who are who are learned must always remember that they are not better than others. And Uvusi is a is a type of person who likes to come across to say, "No, I I worked hard. 
I slept in my car. I did this. Tried to look down to other people to say, you must also work hard. And I love my brother, um, oh, my brother, Uvusi. I love all my African brothers, even about Penuel and what, what. If you want to go to their channel, subscribe. I also watch some, their, some of their content. Uh, not so much with Penuel because Tony Doty, loyal Mr. O Orania. Uh, but Uvusi, I watch uh, uh, some of his content because you learn some of the, uh, some of the things they teach about, you learn. But when it comes to black unity, you never learn anything from those two. I promise you. I prom and I'm not speaking bad about them. I'm saying go to their channel, subscribe, consume the, the content that helps you and block the content that does not help you. Because I am like I said, I watch them also. But I know they don't they don't they don't advocate for black excellence, black uh, black unity, one Africa, whatever. They are for classism. For those who work hard, I'm going to be with you guys because you guys got the same privilege that I've got. That we must fight against. As Africans, we must always uh, wake up at the and, uh, and you know sometimes it's not nice naming people by their names and all because someone will name me or whatever and I hope it will be in a good light. I say as long as I'm hated for being a Pan Africanist, great. I don't want to be hated uh, when when other people speak about me. They speak about me in this light that Ubonginkos is speaking. Ubonginkos is Ubonginkos. Ubonginkos is Kanyele. Uh, is speaking about uh, Usiya and Uvuzitembe I, I, I wish that when people speak about me, they say, if you want to hear a pan Africanist, go to listen to King. That, that will make me happy because that is what we are here for as African, African unity and African oneness. Now, he says now on my last clip, he drops now a big bomb about African children being discriminated because of the texture of their hair in white schools he dropped a last bomb okay this this will be my last one if you want part, part three you just type part three please king on the comment section and i have it their color their color match the problem in this country is not white people it's black people who are refusing to be black white people have no problem they're just being white you must begin to be black stand for your own right what's wrong with us dj Spoo? why are we refusing to be black in our country, stronger, stronger together, stronger together. When, 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 when Bafana Bafana comes back, there's no more stronger together. Because white people, they know themselves. They have no business with you. For 30 years, DJ Spoo, you've been trying to beg white people and hugging them. Myself, I will never go to a school, a, a, a private school of white people when they chase your child. DJ Spoo, don't call me in a white school when they, 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 they mistreat her. White people there and said, hey, in well, like, you're better, or, or when they give her racism. I'm not going to call them protest. Because you neglect your school in the township. You look down upon your schools in the township and you take them there. Immediately when they abuse your children, you want to go and do it. Do it. Why do you like to follow white people for 30 years, but they've sh they've never moved an inch towards you? Nina, hey, hey, Caitlin, huh? hey, you even speak like, hey, you know, hey, my friend is white. Hey, oh, 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 This is not a hate against white people. This is saying uh, we are no longer willing to move as this generation. From Mandela, we've been trying to a uh, rainbow nation. June 16 is coming, DJ Spoo. Again, go, Google, and phone in. June 16 is coming, a day of reconciliation. In the state, I mean, government programs and in the, in the programs of political parties, white people don't come for the day of reconciliation. You reconcile with yourself. You day a day of reconciliation, but it's, it's Mumalo and, and Rama. <laughs> white people are not there. You are reconciling, you are being addressed by, 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 by your political leaders. Rama Hush. You, you are reconciling with yourselves. What's wrong with you? For, for you as a race to be taken serious, love yourself and love everything that has to do with yourself. You don't need to hate yourself. Just love yourself more and say from here, I am not willing to move an inch. You spend your most time trying to speak in English like a white man. I went to vets, they couldn't transform me. I went to, to UK, they couldn't transform me. I speak English like I'm, I'm doing. Because, you know, immediately, how are you? 
and brothers and sisters, as long as we are still showing our white people that we need them, that we, we think they are better, we will never come right in our country. We will never come right in our continent. As long as we don't build our own schools, and don't, as long as we don't build our own suburbs, as long as we don't build our own universities, as long as we don't teach in our own languages, as long as we don't make our country better for our coming generation, and we continue to infiltrate the white spaces, put our black children in white spaces, we will never come right. I tend to agree with him, although I am, I'm, I'm like EFF. When I hear there's a racism somewhere, I stand up and I go attend it. In fact, uh, you guys never congratulated me. I'm an SGB member, a deputy president of my, the SGB of my school child. So I'll see if I can put a picture here. I was elected as a deputy president for my first time. It's the first time ever, well, because my first child is in primary. So first time ever I'm, I'm in the school government body. So I am there to check what is going on. There's no children that are going to... Get, uh, 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 suffer from racism under my watch. It will never happen. Oh, that school, they don't know who they selected. They don't know who they selected because racism will not be tolerated by any measure from me. Never. You understand what I'm saying? But this thing of us taking our children to white schools and then getting surprised when our white, our black children are discriminated by white teachers, by white, um, by white uh, learners, uh, and act as if we are angry, angry for white. White people are just be, uh, being white people. They are busy being white people. They will never love you. Call Shwaman. Call Shwa. They will never see you as their equal. Lebala. They will never see you as an equal person to them. They will always see themselves better. They will always discriminate. It doesn't matter if it's 20, uh, 25. It doesn't matter if it's 2038. As long as you have a weak government like we have, they will continue discriminating against us. Because why? We allow it. And when I say we allow it, I don't mean we went to the school and toy toy out of the school, outside the school, and maybe they find one teacher and then we were okay. No, I'm talking about the whole educational system, changing the whole educational system, building our own school. That is what Paseta is there for. Paseta is not a small and a school that uh, uh, the poorest of the poorest Black people uh, go there. It doesn't have good teachers. It doesn't have a sport field. It doesn't compete in, in international competitions and all. Paseta will be a, the best school in South Africa. And our children will not pay fees. We'll find ways for our children to be in our school. Our children will be selected. We'll be going to the poorest of the poorest and selecting. We'll be having a mixture of African children in our school. We'll make sure that our school becomes the best school that people speak about. This is what Mungikos Kanyele is saying. Uh, build your own institutions. Build your own institutions for God's sake. Stop complaining about how other people uh, treat you when you follow them there. You understand what uh, this young man is saying? My goodness. I'm asking. I'm asking. Okay, that's part two. You guys can see the time. It's past. It's one o'clock. It's past one now. That's how, that's how hard you must work. Sasebenza, sasebenza. We want to build our own institutions. We can't sleep. Us who think we are learned and more informed, we must use the, those strengths to try and bring up other African people. we want, man. Squeeze in, Nati. Squeeze in, Nati. Other people want to live, help another family breadwinner, lift him up so that he can lift his family. That is what we must do as Africans. But whether you just want to win alone, oh, because you Oh, Kosia. And if you are an African, you have been watching this podcast for some time now, but you are not subscribed to King Said So. It's free to subscribe. It's free to click the share button to share this good news. 
But when you find us first, always hit please, please click the subscribe button, click the like button. Tina, we want to hit these twenty thousand subscribers, mad, mad. And I thank everyone that has subscribed and everyone that has supported the channel. Yamongaga cool, my African people. So, um, yeah, if you guys want part three, I can do part three for you. I, I don't get tired of speaking about such topics. For me, they are news, a uh, good news to my spirit. They feed me when I hear that there's other African brothers and sisters thinking like this. And this is what every youth league of every political party that is pro-African must have. EFF must have such leaders. The ANC must have such leaders. Well, ANC is not pro-African, but they claim to be. So they must also have such leaders. Uh, who are we missing? The, uh, the PEC must have such leaders. The UDM must have such leaders. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Umkonto already has. There's one party I'm missing. There was uh, a rise, not a rise of Zanti. A rise of Zanti must have such leaders. And uh, ATM is the party I'm missing. Must have such youth. This is the youth that you need. Uh, you need youth like this. I'm telling you right now. So there's your part two that you asked for, ladies and gentlemen. If you need the Tripoli Shelendava, you know what to do. Until we meet next time, don't forget to pray. But after you pray, African child, stand up. Do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in pan-Africanism. I salute you.